it's 6.30 straight ahead. Grab your coat and umbrella because cold showers are in our forecast. Tom's got the details on those and when they're expected to arrive. And a fire claims the life of one local man, how the community wants him to be remembered. In a stunning break from President Trump, the head of the DOJ says the department saw no widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election. And Deborah L. thrown in Washington with that and a potential bribery scheme involving a presidential pardon. Live from 12 Studios, this is News 12 AM. Well, good morning, Texoma. Thanks for joining us. I'm Stan Smith. And I'm Christy Waite. And Stan, it's another cold day across Texoma. Mm -hmm. We got our coats and blankets. And I don't think you should probably be drinking iced coffee today. No, not today. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. Right, Tom? <laughs> Ooh, no, you need the hot coffee all day long. As we are looking at highs only around 47. You want some snow? Well, pack the kids up. Head towards northwestern Oklahoma. Woodward expecting about a foot of snow for us. Not in the cards. It'll get cold, 33, 35 by tomorrow morning, but we'll stay above freezing. And right now we're looking at some light rain moving across eastern areas of Texas. It will be expanding westerly throughout the morning into the afternoon. But right now a dry Texoma Parkway as we look at our Sherman Tower Cam sponsored by Hunter Super Tex and a temperature of 43, no freezing temperatures this morning. As a matter of fact, partly to mostly cloudy skies. And there you go. Coolest temperature is 39 in Marietta. It's 43 in Antler. 46 in Greenville and uh, wind chill values are dipping down into the mid 30s. So definitely the kids need to bundle up as the bus stop forecast sponsored by McDonald's shows 41 wind chill value about 35 and by the time they get home 47. That's it for a high and we'll have some rain forecast is coming up. All right. Thank you, Tom. Well, a fire in Pottsboro on Sunday left a 46 year old man dead and firefighters say they found the body of Brian Dixon inside the bathroom of his home. Investigators are waiting on autopsy results to find out why he died, but say the fire started from a grill on his porch. Neighbors say Dixon left a legacy in the community and they wanted to honor his life in the best way they could. News 12's Nina Quattrino reports. I need to do something to remember him. I need to if I got to spend all the money in the world, I'm going to I went out and I bought hamburger meat, hot dogs, everything. 46-year-old Brian Dixon's death on Sunday came as a shock to the Preston Shores community. Immediately, I called my neighbor and I said, what's going on? Sarah Bounds says fire trucks, first responders, and smoke filled her neighborhood. She says firefighters called Dixon's phone and they could hear it ringing from inside, but he did not answer. He didn't make it, but as soon as I heard that, you know, my daughter coincidentally was right there and she said mommy why are you crying and I said you know Brian he didn't he was in a fire and he didn't make it baby and that's hard that's hard to tell a child firefighters say Dixon's body was found inside the bathroom of his home neighbors friends and co-workers say he was someone they could trust and count on that's part of Lake family is that you don't ask for anything in return but you know sometimes it came with a hot meal and a cold beer I guess that's fair. Yeah, I mean, we've all, mm -hmm. I've lived out here for two years now. We're very um, tight knit community. Yes. Uh, with yes. everything that's happened in the last year, especially, um, we lean on each other a lot. Mm. The most amazing employee I've ever had. If you looked at his property, you looked at everything, you would think he would never show up on time. He was on time every single day. Tuesday night, members of the community gathered at the lake together. They want him to be remembered by his heart and who he was. And that, that should be his legacy, not where he lived, not how he lived or anything like that. In Pottsboro, Nina Quattrino, News 12. Well, two people are dead after a fire ripped through their home in Bocchito early yesterday morning. Video caught by a neighbor shows the house completely engulfed in flames. It happened around 7 a.m. on Empson Street. Police say the Bakchito Volunteer Fire Department got there just over 20 minutes after the first 911 call came in. A dog was also found dead after the fire. Officials are not releasing their names pending the investigation by the Oklahoma City Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, I heard glass breaking. I seen the smoke bellowing out from the windows and I immediately called 911. Fire Marshal ruled the fire accidental, tracing it back to a space heater in the dining room without proper distance from combustible materials. 
A Bryan County man fell to his death while on the job Sunday. Durant police tell us Jacob Miller died while working at CMC Steel in Durant Sunday around noon. They tell us it's not a criminal matter and that OSHA was notified by CMC. Miller was 53 years old. Two brothers are facing charges for breaking into a home and pointing a knife at those inside. Whitesboro police arrested 21 year old Christopher and 17 year old Victor De Hoyos on Friday night. Now the brothers walked into a 15 year old's home to confront him and threatened him with a knife. Police say they were friends before. Both were arrested for organized criminal activity and burglary. Victor faces five charges for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for each of the teen's family members who were inside. Police in Paris are also asking for help finding a missing teen. They say 15 year old Haley Pritchett has been missing for three weeks. She is five foot four and 120 pounds with long straight brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen walking out of her home close to midnight on November the 10th and was wearing a light colored hoodie and a dark leggings and carrying a purple backpack. Police say she has a history of running away but always returned after a few days. If you see her, call Paris police. Also, Sherman police are investigating a shots fired in the neighborhood on Sunday. Police say it happened on the 1000 block of East O'Neill Street just after 430 in the afternoon. They say multiple shots were fired, but there were no injuries. The property manager and neighbors who live in that area say the people involved did not live there. Came to the property, um, had drama with another uh, person. Um, then they began shooting. Uh, I don't know if if they intentionally shot at them or if they just shot for were fired. Um, but I do know it wasn't a resident that lived here. It wasn't over drugs. It was just who was the toughest guy. I thought it was just some visitors. So pretty much that's what a lot of the time what it is. It's visitors and not the people that actually live here. Sherman police are still investigating and haven't released any details on if any arrests have been made. Joe Exotic's legal team says they are down to the final steps to get a presidential pardon for the Tiger King. According to the New York Times, Joseph Maldonado Passage, better known as Joe Exotic, is among those seeking a pardon before President Donald Trump leaves office. One of his lawyers said, quote, we are waiting on the pen to hit the paper and we think we are very, very close. Supporters of Joe Exotic have been trying various ways to get Trump's attention, including racking a bill worth about $10,000 at Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. Now let's take a quick check of the most active coronavirus cases along with the new deaths reported across Texoma and different counties. Lamar added over 100 new active cases. They now have 648 active cases, by far the most in Texoma. Cook added 81 new cases, Grayson 41, and Pontotoc County with 29. As of now, there are currently a little more than 3,800 active cases in our viewing area and more than 22,000 people have recovered. And now let's swing it on over to meteorologist Tom Miller. Tom, it's going to rain a little bit now and maybe a little bit more later. <laughs> exactly. All in all, just have the rain gear handy and the coat. It's going to be chilly. High of only about 47 today. And you can see the rain has been spilling into eastern areas of Texoma, generally east of 6975. But it'll be expanding westerly throughout the morning and especially this afternoon. And it's going to be a cold rain across Texoma as uh, we have a low pressure system and Pacific front still off to our west. Look at this, already snowing up in northwestern Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, Woodward uh, projected to get maybe 10 to 12 inches of snow. Well, no snow here, but we could see anywhere from a tenth of an inch, maybe up to three quarters of an inch. And as a matter of fact, look at our Sherman Tower cam. We actually have partly cloudy skies this morning as we look over Texoma Parkway, which is dry. It's sponsored by Hunter uh, Super Tex and temperature 43 three degrees. No freezing temperatures this morning, but it is going to be a cool, wet day, so prepare for it. And uh, that will be the case as well as we head into Thursday. Friday, the sunshine will return. There's your low pressure system Pacific cool front. We got an Arctic high pressure system near Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now again, the cold air won't quite catch uh, at least the low pressure system until it's going to be well off to the east, meaning a cold rain, but no frozen precipitation here. 
Oklahoma City may see up to an inch of snow and then again further south now I think it's just going to be cold rain 43 currently in Ada 43 in Ardmore and Durant and Sherman and Denison 43 in McKinney winds are out of the southeast it is chilly wind chill values in the lower to mid 30s across much of the area so definitely need to bundle up uh, Elk City behind that front at 35, 36 in Guyman. So it's cold, but not overly cold. Look at Pueblo at 27. Of course, Denver is about 25. They're closer to that Arctic high pressure system. Elevation at Lake Texoma at 615.67 feet. And the Futurecast models showing that rain spilling out from east to west as that Pacific front slowly, and I mean ever so slowly, starts to push across Texoma. The upper level system will stay off to our north, and that's why the coldest of the air will stay to our north. Now, tomorrow morning at this time, we still could see a light shower or mainly drizzle. But again, temperatures will be 33 to around 35. And rainfall amounts, again, about a tenth in western areas. And we could see maybe three quarters of an inch in eastern areas. So a high temperature of 47 today, about 33, 35 tonight, 46. That's it for a high tomorrow. Friday, mostly sunny, 51. Beautiful weekend as we're looking at mostly sunny with highs in the upper 50s after morning lows near freezing. Well, the head of the Justice Department is the latest government official to say there has not been any evidence of widespread voter fraud. President Trump and his campaign continue to claim a rigged election, but have so far failed to prove any evidence. CBS's Deborah Alferone has more plus details about the concern one Georgia Republican has about the election rhetoric. Attorney General William Barr told the Associated Press the Justice Department has not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. This election was a fraud. For Barr, it's a rare break from President Trump, who still refuses to concede to Joe Biden. We love you! Video taken by a guest at the White House Christmas party last night shows President Trump telling his supporters he's still fighting and teased a run in 2024. It's been an amazing four years. We're trying to do another four years. I'll see you in four years. The DOJ is also looking into a bribery for pardon scheme where individuals try to lobby White House officials for a presidential pardon. Last night, a federal judge released 20 pages of court documents that point to a, quote, secret lobbying scheme. But since the documents are heavily redacted, little more is publicly known. The DOJ tells CBS News no government officials are currently targeted in the investigation. It has to stop. In Georgia, a top Republican official worries rhetoric around the election is getting dangerous. Gabriel Sterling says election workers have received death threats from people who believe the vote was rigged. Someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to get shot, someone's going to get killed. Mr. President, you have not condemned these actions or this language. Some Republicans fear the president's attacks could affect voter turnout in the two runoff Senate races next month. Deborah Alfarone, CBS News, Washington. From the Weather Authority, here's Tom Miller. Rain working its way across eastern areas of Texoma. The remainder of Texoma partly cloudy. Looks like a fairly nice morning. The catch is, well, the Pacific Front located right out to our west. We'll start to pull that moisture back westward into Texoma. So it's just a matter of time before we see later this morning in this afternoon rain move all across Texoma. The heaviest of the rain will stay, though, in eastern areas. As a matter of fact, look at our Sherman Tower cam. This sponsored by Hunter uh, Supertex. As we look off towards the east, you can see that, uh, again, rain shield out in Lamar County and portions of Choctaw and Pushmataha counties. And again, that's all going to be headed our way. So don't leave 
out the door without the rain gear. You're going to need it. Now, temperatures are above freezing, but it still is chilly. We have 43 degrees east southeast winds at about oh, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Weather where it's going to be chilly and wet, especially later this morning into the afternoon. And in eastern areas, we could see some potentially locally heavy rainfall. Here's the Pacific front. It's located around Wichita Falls. We'll slowly move easterly, picking up that moisture and then depositing it back down as light to moderate rain showers. Where's all the cold air? It's locked up with the Arctic high pressure system in Wyoming, and that'll be paying us a visit later tonight, tomorrow. But the good news is low temperatures tonight should stay anywhere from 33, 35 degrees, so nothing freezing, no snow with this weather event. 41 in Paul's Valley, 43 in Ardmore, 43 in Durant, coolest temperature on the map, 39 in Marietta, and we have that southeasterly breeze of 5 to 15, and that does leave wind chill values mid to upper 30, so definitely need the coat hat and the gloves went hurt as well as the rain gear. Elevation at Lake Texoma now down to 615.67 feet. Let's put that Futurecast model into motion. I'm going to stop it at about 1030 this morning. You can see that rain spilling across 6975 up towards the noon hour. It'll be moving into portions of the I-35 corridor. Again, the heaviest of the rain out to our east. And we're looking at even some scattered light rain or drizzle tomorrow morning with lows 33 to around 35. Not much warmth today. 47 as we'll see an increase in cloud cover. 46. That's it for a high tomorrow after a low of 33. 51 with clearing skies Friday. Looks fantastic the weekend. Looking at mostly sunny skies. Highs in the upper 50s. All right, thank you, Tom. Well, one young girl from Indiana has been defying the odds ever since she was born. She actually has a rare disease, but just recently she was handed a new gift of getting around. The adorable little girl was surprised with a new motorized chair. WTTV's Mike Sullivan shows you how it will change her life. Take a look. Health is often taken for granted unless there's a problem. For one five-year-old, She's always found a way to adapt, and she never stops moving. Her health is a daily challenge. I want to be more like her when I grow up. Even if she doesn't always show it. Hi! Hi. No, it's not, but look! I'd like you to meet Lila. Hello. Hi. A little Hoosier about to get her first set of wheels well before her permit. Do you need it for school? Yeah. Yeah, and to get around? Lila suffers from EB, epidermolasis bullosa. Her case affects one in one million. It leaves her without the common protein, collagen 7. It's the glue that keeps your skin, your tissues, your mucosal membranes attached to your body. Any heat, friction, or trauma can cause her skin to slough or blister. If she falls, the skin slips off. If she bumps, it will blister and fill with fluid until I pop it. It affects her fingers and organs, even her esophagus. Everything is affected. Her eyes scratch easily. All it takes is one wrong blink. With a blister coming with one wrong step. When she was born, they didn't know if she'd make it a year. Yet here she is. Can you climb up there? Yeah. Receiving a free motorized wheelchair from Anna's celebration of life. The chair is going to make it so that no matter what we have planned, we don't have to change the plan. Often, Lila is wrapped in numerous bandages. I cry when I hurt. She cries when she hurts. Her family routinely has to clean and redress the wounds. while still caring for their other children. This is going to be last resort in times when she ha actually needs it because I want her to use her muscles. To balance life expectancy with experience. She's a happy kid and kids gravitate to that. And they want to be her friend. They want to play with her. Especially now that she's the first one to drive. Thank you. In Indianapolis, I'm Mike Sullivan, Fox 59 News. We're going to take a quick break, but before we do that, here's a look at what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Coming up, the United Kingdom is the first country in the world to approve Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine. Plus, we'll tell you why the CDC is revising its guidelines on vaccine distribution and quarantines. Coming up on CBS This Morning.
are some stories to know on the go this morning. Just days after the monolith disappeared from a desert in Utah, a similar structure appeared on a Romania hillside on Friday, but was gone just three days later. Interesting. It remains unclear on how it got there and how it was removed several days later. In the U.S., a Colorado photographer says he saw four men enter the Utah site Friday night and push over the monolith. Utah officials say they're not planning an investigation into the disappearance, which the monolith was placed without permission on public land, but are still accepting tips on who placed it there in the first place. It's the iconic leg lamp that we should all know by now at this point. Well, it's now a 40 foot tall display over Chickasha for all to see. It's part of the annual festival of lights in town and economic council official in Chickasha who came up with the idea says he hopes to give travelers a good reason to visit the, visit the town. They also have a 70 foot Christmas tree and will be up until the end of the month. So we triple dog dare you to check it out. It's a major award and Christy, it's fragile. <laughs> it's Italian. Well, this next story is actually for the kiddos. Santa isn't coming to town for another couple of weeks, but well, you can follow him at least. The North American Aerospace Defense Command launched its website where you can track St. Nick around the world this year on the NORADSanta.org. It's going to have your holiday countdown, games, music, and more. Then on Christmas Eve, Santa will start streaming and you will be able to track where he goes and all of his reindeer and you can see where they're headed next. So that's good. That was that's like always my favorite thing because on Christmas Eve we get to track and see where Santa is. It's appointment TV, Christy. And finally, folks will be able to enjoy the city of Sherman's annual Christmas parade from the comfort of their homes this year. Officials recently announced the annual parade will be live streamed because of the surge of the COVID-19 cases in the county. The event will feature dozens of floats and groups marching through downtown. It's happening this Saturday at 6 p.m. and you can catch the live stream on our website, KXII.com. The Denison Chamber of Commerce is also holding its annual drive through parade and what's happening tomorrow night. And, and Tom, I would say it's perfect weather to have one of those parades this weekend, too. Mm. Yeah, uh, both really Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're looking at some sunshine. Maybe not so much uh, tomorrow morning, but at least Thursday afternoon and some cool temperatures, so it'll feel like Christmas. Uh, doesn't look like it on the radar as we are not seeing any snow or snow, nor do we expect it, but you can see some light rain. It is going to be expanding westerly, and as it does, well, it's going to leave us a 70% chance of rain throughout the day, 47, 46 on Thursday. And there you go, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, nice temperatures. Have you ever won a major award? No, I don't think so. You didn't get the movie reference? Yeah. We'll be back. <laughs>